Welcome to the Min Master Studio, and today I'm going to tell you whether or not your truck will survive a nuke. So I know what you guys are thinking. This is a pretty off-the-wall topic for uh, an old DIY truck channel, but I think it will have some relevance to us. So uh, a while back, I don't know of some world incidences and things going on, but a lot of people took to the internet speculating as to what kind of vehicle would survive an EMP. So I know I said nuke, I think we can all agree nothing would survive that, but an EMP stands for electromagnetic pulse. Essentially, you detonate a nuclear device in atmosphere, bang, it radiates out and knocks out all electronics. This has a tactical purpose, which is basically to immobilize your enemy while preserving the physical infrastructure. Because you can imagine, if the thing knocks out all electronics, your vehicle will stop working, phones will stop working, internet will be down, power will be out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as you can imagine, all of the car enthusiasts were like, well, what vehicle can I have that when it goes off, I can keep driving? And based on the kind of, it knocks out electronics, a lot of people speculated that older model vehicles pre um, fuel injection, pre electronic uh, fuel management, et cetera, would actually survive. So I'm here to tell you they're all wrong and I got science to prove it. So in 2004, the United States government basically got a group together and had them study this. That was called the Report of the Commission to Assess the Threat to the United States from Electromagnetic Pulse Attack. It's about 20 like scientists or so um, went around the United States for a number of years and went category by category studying every aspect of the U.S. and how it would be affected if one of these things went boom in our atmosphere. Now, the part that I think bears the most relevance to our subject right now is Chapter 6, Trucks. So, believe it or not, these couple of brainiacs all got together and rigged up a system that would simulate an electromagnetic pulse. And they basically brought a whole bunch of cars and trucks in there and they tested them. So uh, for the vehicle test, they brought 18 trucks, uh, both gas and diesel in a wide uh, year range. So from 91 to 03. So now where you see where I'm getting at with OBS trucks. And basically they started on kind of a low setting. They turned up the dial to see if they could elicit a response. So the first test, all the trucks were off and they went boom. And then they upped the intensity. All the trucks, you go out, boom, fired right up. No effect whatsoever. So that was the non-running test. So next thing you do is they turned all the trucks on, start the lowest setting, and they started these pulses. So 13 of the 18 trucks exhibited a response while running. Now, exhibited a response, okay? And then they break down. Three of the trucks, the motor stopped, so shut off. And they'll say in there they went out and a lot of times it would turn back on. Two um, could be restarted. One need to be towed away. That's pretty good odds. The other 10 trucks that responded um, had minor uh, issues. And those were sometimes described as like a blinker stayed on or a check engine light, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So from that, they concluded that in fact, a lot of these vehicles would survive and do well. And really what that scenario would look like is you'd be driving in traffic and more, you know, likely than that, a small percentage of the trucks would stop, you turn them back on and you could drive home. They further go on to say that they expect the results to get worse because they saw the trend in 04 that vehicles were gonna get more and more electronics and therefore, um, they could be more affected by these rather than these older models. So what can we conclude from this? Everybody else was wrong. Uh, sorry, Scotty Kilmore, you were wrong. The Wired, you were wrong. You can have these newer vehicles, at least up to 04, and you have a pretty good chance that you're going to survive one of these things. So keep that in mind. When you're driving your OBS Ford, seems kind of old, but kind of not, you might be the guy driving home to your little prepper shelter or wherever when everybody else's newer vehicles come to a screeching halt, at least until they conduct this test again. Let's dive into a couple comments. First comment, I get this one a lot. Someone asked, what year constitutes an OBS? And I probably need to do like a lengthier video at, uh, for this question, but here it is. 
So in 1996, Ford discontinued our lovely OBS Ford body style, and they went to the newer uh, style with the 97 F-150. The exception to that is Ford always delays a year when they do the F-250s and F-350s. So in 1997, the F-250 and the F-350s still had the oval body OBS Ford body that we're aware of, but it did uh, include the Super Duty badge. Now, go in a couple more years, you've got OBS Ford Super Duty and you've got new Super Duties in the same repair shop. And so a lot of guys would say, hey, you know, something on that Super Duty. And people are like, which one? They'd be like, the OBS one, the old body style. So strictly speaking, an OBS is a 97 F250, F350. Now, you put an F150 next to an F250 in that body style and look about the same. So a little more generally speaking, the other years, including F-150s, came to be called OBS. More broadly speaking, since so many parts are shared with bedsides and fenders and windshields and, and all that kinds of stuff, with some uh, minor variation, I will loosely include uh, 1980 through 96 and 97 with the F-250 in the OBS category. All right, last comment, guys, from Peter Palmer 7014. He asks, how do you clean it? And he posted that comment on the what is that part mass airflow sensor video I did not too long ago. So in that video, I say if you think your mass airflow sensor is not working well, clean it. That's the cheapest thing you can do before you have to replace them. They are quite expensive. And so you can go to any auto parts store, buy a can of cleaner. The CRC brand is what comes to mind. And you can either uh, take your mass airflow sensor out of your truck or leave it in place and basically spray it. And you're trying to clean that little electrical sensor that hangs down there in the intake. Hopefully that solves your problem because they can be quite expensive. Um, otherwise, you'll have to replace them. And that's it, guys. See ya.